The Next.js image component is pretty incredible, but it could be way more powerful. In about a minute, you can add amazing features like pixelation, background removal, borders, overlays, all sorts of stuff. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can supercharge the Next.js image component. And at the end, I'll even show you how I built a meme generator using this package. So let's dive in. All right, so this one is gonna be fun. We're gonna talk about how to take the Next.js image component to the next level. And if you're relatively new to Next.js or image components in general, these are becoming more and more popular. Gatsby, I think, was one of the first ones to do an image component. Next.js did one, one of my favorite frameworks, Astro now has an image component. And so it's the idea that this is like a, a component that you can use inside of your source code that I can do optimizations around. So if you give it a height and width, it can go ahead and take up that amount of height and width. It can pull in, optimize images. It can do a lot of different things to optimize the way that we work with images. And that's great. But if you add on this package that we're gonna cover in a second, you can add a ton more features. And this package is the next Cloudinary package. Now, if you followed me for a while, you probably know that I'm a huge fan of Cloudinary. I've used it to automatically generate images for uh, podcasts, for live streams, for lots of different things. It's really one of the most incredible products out there. And we're gonna take a look at their new package called Next Cloudinary, which allows us to add all the functionality and features inside of Next.js from Cloudinary. Now, the cool thing is that this package is actually built on top of Next.js image component. So this is the way that we're taking the image component from Next.js and supercharging it with all the features of Cloudinary. This video is sponsored by Cloudinary. So if you're interested, make sure to go and give this a try because I think you'll really like what you're about to see here in a second. So this image component, if we look into the basic usage, we have a component and it looks kind of like the image component from Next.js where you can give width, height, source, and alt. Now the source in here is actually gonna come from Cloudinary. So I have a bunch of images stored inside of Cloudinary, including all of these pictures that I'm using for meme generator. You can see how fun some of these are. And I'll show you more about that in a second, but I've got a few images in here. So let's actually go to a just a test here. So I've got a Next.js project, it's, it's configured with Tailwind. And I've got the CLD image uh, or the next Cloudinary package installed and I'm referencing the CLD image inside of here. So notice I give it a width and a height, I give it a crop. I tell it a source, this is a unique ID for an image stored inside of Cloudinary. I'm not actually passing any overlays yet, we'll come back to that and then we'll show all these features inside of here. So if we just look at this image, looks great, cool. What the interesting thing is here, if I copy this image address, this is gonna be a really complicated looking string. So you can see this is coming from the Cloudinary domain, and then it has things inside of this URL to, to clarify the width, the height, the uh, format auto. That means this thing is actually gonna send me a WebP instead of a PNG, because it's more performant. Quality auto, and then uh, it has the ID of the image that we're working with. So just to kind of show you, if I were to open this, um, you'll see this is the image here. If I download or if I save this image, it's actually gonna save it. I've saved it before, uh, but this is gonna save it as a WebP. Let's just try to prove that. So there's the WebP down there. So I could also come into the URL and I could give it, uh, maybe get rid of the height and maybe give it a width of 1920. And this should come back with a bigger image. So there's our full bigger image. So you control all that stuff through the URL and then abstracted from that is the ability to do this with this component inside of Next.js. So this means not only can we control basic things like width and height, we can control all of these other different properties that we'll see in a second. So I'll come back to remove background here in a second, but let's just start with blur. Again, all properties you just add in here to the component, it takes care of it for you. So there's a blur, a blur of 1200. Let's see what 100 looks like, should be a lot less blurred. And what's happening is each time Cloudinary gets a different request for a specific version of this image that's different, it's going to create that image and then cache it. So the second time we actually request this image, it's actually gonna be a lot faster. I wonder if we could show this on here. Let's actually do, let's do an inspect and let's come into the network panel and let's just look at image requests and let's preserve the log. And let's change this to something new that we haven't done before. So we haven't done 300. So let's uh, see this. This is going to uh, take 989 milliseconds at that size. So if we refresh, 
This now took 51 milliseconds because that image is now cached on the Cloudinary side. So all of our images are gonna be that much faster after the first time that we uh, request them, which is really amazing. So we can add blur in here. Uh, this is kind of a fun one, a pixelate one. Uh, this is kind of interesting uh, where it kind of gives like pixelated versions of the image. I think that's fun. Now, one hack that you could do with this is you could give this like a, a 10 by 10, not pixelate this. You say you want a 10 by 10 image of this. And then what you could do is come into the image itself and give it a height of or a width of 960 pixels. And so this is now a really cheap and inexpensive way to do a lazy loaded blurry image if you see where I'm going with this. So this took the 10 by 10 and it stretched it out. But but also this 10 by 10 to request this is now going to be tiny because it's giving you this tiny image. So it's 548 bytes versus the what if I went back to the full image? So versus the full image is 51.6 kilobytes. So it has like a built in way to do lazy loading, fuzzy, uh, fuzzy loading, whatever you want to call it, which is really, really neat. So we have pixelate there. We also can get into colors so we can do grayscale. They've got some other keywords, but here's like my grayscale version of this. You can do tint. Uh, so once you kind of learn the syntax in here of like what the tint is that you're trying to do, now you get this like overly saturated blue thing. You can also add borders. This is kind of neat. So if you if you think about like starting to combine these, you could do grayscale and border. And so there, there you get that instead of the actual purple version. I guess it changes the borders color too. I guess it changes the entire thing. So maybe you wouldn't combine those. Uh, and then you can also do a uh, crop. So let's say you want like a thumbnail image. You can do a crop here. And this is going to now give me like a, a more zoomed in version on my face and it has auto detection for faces or you could tell it to key in on different things, which is really cool. Uh, and then the gravity auto is actually picking up auto. So all that stuff's really cool. The other thing I can do just to show you this really quickly is the uh, overlay. So we can add images and text as overlays. And so in, in this case, I'm adding, I thought I understood, which I think is pretty fitting for this image. And so what this is, is just a JavaScript object. I call this top text. And so you give it a width, how you want it to be cropped, where you want it to be positioned as the overlay, and then what's the actual text. So you can control color, font family, size, bold, a stroke, and the text itself. So if we wanted to change this to black, for example, which we probably wouldn't do because this will basically now disappear because of the border, we could do that, control all the things, basically the equivalent of regular CSS we can control to create these uh, overlays. Again, you can do this with images as well. If you want to see kind of a full list of all the things that you can do, you can go into the configuration and see all the different things that you can try. Uh, also, the examples tab. Now, I did mention I want to show you the background removal, but I saved that for last because this does require a specific add-on inside of Cloudinary. So if I go to my add-ons, I think in this section, you will be able to see that I have the Cloudinary AI background removal enabled. So I've currently used four of my 15 uh, free background removals. So if we come down, there it is, the Cloudinary AI background removal, you get 15 for free. So you can go and try this out and you can pay if you want to do like batches of these or whatever you wanna do, which is pretty neat. So again, same sort of thing. Once you have that enabled, this won't work if you don't have it enabled, you could come in here and uh, remove the background. So let's get rid of the text and then remove the background. And there's the removed background. Now, me as a YouTuber who does lots of fun faces on YouTube thumbnails, this is an easy way for me to go and create the background removed version of my thumbnail. So a bunch of different things you can do just by swapping out the CLD image component with the Next.js image component or swapping out the Next.js image component with the CLD image component. Now, another thing I wanna show you is that this has another component called the CLD OG image component. So uh, let's actually take this. Uh, let's get rid of these. Let's get rid of all of that. And uh, let's copy this. So let's just duplicate it. And let's change this to be, or actually, let's not yet. So now we'll just have two of these, which is not what we want. But I'm going to scroll over to Polypane, which is a really cool browser I did a video on. It's a paid product, just so you know. But it gives you this multiple viewports. But then most importantly, relevant to this video, is a super easy way to inspect all of your metadata and then see the preview cards for your images. So I actually gave a little bit of this away. So let me, there it is. So this refresh. 
So by default on this website, it does uh, an OG image of this meme. So this is one that I created. But if I wanna customize the OG image on any page, all I have to do is change this component to OG image. You can see it's not gonna render anymore because it's going to add itself to the top as an OG image. And this takes a second to refresh, there it is. So if you wanna control your OG image, all you have to do is use the very similar, almost exact looking component, just OG image instead of CLD image. And now you can control what your car, what your images are, your image previews in cards that you post across the different websites. So all this stuff I think is super, super neat. I wonder what kind of use cases you may see or what sort of stuff you may be interested in. Let me know in the comments below. And I wanna walk you through a little bit more of how I built this meme generator. But first, really quickly, I wanna give a couple of shout outs in this video for things that I think are pretty neat. So the first one here is a project from Colby Fayok who created the component that this whole video is about who works for Cloudinary. But he created this thing called Image Carbon. And so what it does is it uh, calculates the emissions for your website, which is wild. Basically the emissions is gonna be like based on your images, how much better could your image performance be? Really, really neat stuff. So it goes through and it kind of makes a guess at like, all right, if you if you have 10,000 requests per month, 120 a year, how much carbon is that per year? And it associates it to slices of Neapolitan pizza, gallons of gas burn, cups of coffee, et cetera. And so then it goes, goes by image by image and kind of gives you some way that you can optimize these, which is really, really neat. So if you want to get an idea of how your website compares its carbon footprint in terms of images, check out carbon footprint. Let me make sure I get the URL imagecarbon.com. Make sure to check that out. And then another thing that I want to shout out, if you're interested in React, which this was focused on Next.js, is a newsletter that I just came across recently this week in React. So it's a free newsletter, awesome updates on uh, content, on jobs, anything re related, relevant to React, you can find in this newsletter. So this week in React is the newsletter at thisweekinreact.com. And the last thing I'll mention, if you're looking for a place to host your Next.js project, I have an affiliate link for Vercel. I'm a huge Vercel fan. Many of you probably are too. You don't have to use the affiliate link, but I have an affiliate link in the description below. If you want to use that and you go for a paid account, I'll get a kickback if you want to support me. If you don't, just ignore it. Go to Vercel directly. All right, so let's come back to the JQQ memes project. Uh, so this was just a fun one that I wanted to build using Next.js, using this new package from Cloudinary, using AppWrite to store all the data, and then in this case, deploy it on Vercel. So if we look in the meme generator part, you'll see that this text is gonna look a little bit different than the final text. So if I say, I'm trying to study, uh, stuffy, study, the, uh, the text decoration looks a little bit different than what you'll see in Cloudinary. That's because I'm actually not using Cloudinary to generate the meme. What I'm doing is just adding text overlays. So if you look inside of here, you can see this is just a regular P tag. So there's a little bit of text in here. The bottom text is the same thing. It's just another P tag that gets shown or hidden. And so this way I can generate this preview much faster than if I were to wait for the new image to be calculated and then cache inside of Cloudinary. So I do all of this locally with just HTML overlays. I also have some IntelliSense or some intelligence in here. Like as this gets smaller, I scale down the text so that it starts to fit the image as well. Cause otherwise you can see there's a little bit of carryover, but otherwise uh, it would just uh, be way too big for the image itself. So I do a little bit of that. I have customization for text size and bottom size. And what I do is when you save this, it takes the top text, the bottom text, the image ID, the top text size and the bottom text size, and it saves those into the database in AppWrite. And I think that's really cool. And so what you can do after that, or what I do after that is under the community memes, this just shows stuff that people bought or created, not bought, free thing, is then I use Cloudinary to display these. So if I go into the uh, memes page, this is going to reference the meme list component, which in this case then references the JQQ meme. JQQ meme component is something I just built on top of the Cloudinary image component. So you can see in here, it references CLD image component inside of here. And it calculates the overlays based on the top text, the bottom text, the top text size, and the bottom text size. 
So this is all the same thing that we would have seen from Cloudinary before. So this big long string, and it basically generates that string from all the different things that we saved inside of AppWrite. So I thought this was pretty neat. If you want to give this a try, I'd love to hear what you think. Try it out at jqqmemes.com. And also just check out Cloudinary in general and specifically the next Cloudinary package because it's freaking amazing. It's one of the tools that I've been most excited about for like several years now because I've used it all over the place. But let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.